In this tutorial, we're going to discuss how objects inside a Java program can talk to each other while the program is running. For our tutorial, we're going to create a class that's going to mimic the actions of the human body. Inside the human body class, we're going to put a brain class and also a heart class. And our goal is to have the brain send a message to the heart to tell it to beat faster when the human senses danger. This is what our class structure looks like inside Java. Notice that we're going to have an outer class, which is human, and then we're going to have other classes inside of it, uh, in particular the brain class and the heart class. And then when the human senses danger, we want the heart to start beating faster, and we also want the human uh, to start to sweat. One thing we want to start by pointing out is that the relationship between the human class, the brain class, and the heart class is not an inheritance relationship. We would not say the human is a brain. We would not say the brain is a human. Instead, what we have here is a containment relationship. Uh, the human uh, object contains a brain and it contains a heart. That's going to be important for us when we look at the Blue Jay structure here in a minute. Here are the classes uh, defined in Blue Jay. And we see that there are no solid white arrows, once again, because there is no inheritance here. Instead, we have the human class, and this uh, dotted line with the uh, arrow at the end of it indicates that there is a at least one brain object that resides inside of the human, uh, likewise with the heart. And of course, we also have a separate tester class that we're going to use to test all of our code. Let's have a brief look now at each of these classes and the code that they contain. Here is our human class. Inside there we have a string to store the name. We're also going to have a heart object and a brain object embedded inside of our human. In the constructor for the human, we are required to give it a string, which we're going to use uh, to name the human. And here you can see inside the constructor we save the string that's been given to us uh, by the constructor argument. And then we also, uh, first thing we do here after that is to uh, create a new heart object and assign it uh, to our property of heart and also create a new brain object and assign it to our brain property. Uh, we're going to announce our birth as a human and we're also going to set our resting heart rate to be 65. Uh, we also have this method that allows us to sweat when it's called and uh, all we're going to do here is going to print out that we're sweating. Here is the sense danger method that we're going to uh, use when the tiger approaches and here we're going to call the increase heart rate method on my heart and we're going to increase the heart rate by 10. Uh, it's going to return what the new heart rate is. We're going to save that and we're going to print that out so we'll know what our heart rate is after the danger has been sensed and we're also going to uh, get ourselves to sweat. So what's happening here is that we have put the sense danger method inside the human class. Let's have a look now at the heart and the brain classes for a minute. This is our brain class, and for the first version of our communications demonstration, the brain is actually not going to do anything, but uh, let's just okay, take a look at inside the brain. We're going to store this one property called danger, which is going to tell us if we're currently in danger or not. And when the brain is first created, when the human is born, we're going to say uh, there is no danger. So we'll default that to a false value. And here is the getter method for danger that allows any other class to uh, ask us if we're currently in danger or not. Now let's have a look at the heart class. Here is the code for the heart class. And the only property we have there is the heart rate. Uh, when the heart is first uh, created, we're going to set the rate to be zero. Uh, but we provide a method that allows the user to set the heart rate to whatever they want or get the heart rate. And then there's this other method called increase the heart rate. And you can tell the heart class or the heart object, I should say, how much to increase the rate by. And the, uh, the new heart rate is also returned by this method. So this serves to both increase the heart rate as well as to return an answer saying what the new heart rate is. Now let's have a look at the tester class briefly. Here we are in the tester class and the first thing we're going to do after clearing the console is to create two humans, Jack and Jill, and we're going to have Jack sense danger here by calling the sense danger method. Let's uh, run this code now and uh, see it all working. 
Okay, so we see that the uh, two constructors for Jack and Jill have taken effect, and we see that uh, we were able to uh, increase Jack's uh, heart rate from the uh, resting state of 65 to 75, and we see that Jack is also sweating because uh, we had uh, we had Jack sense some danger. Uh, let's look at this code right here for a second, where we create the two separate humans. So what's happening there? is that we have uh, essentially created two uh, separate objects uh, of human class. And what's, what's happened here is that we've uh, allocated completely separate memory for Jack and Jill. And inside of Jack's uh, object, we of course have a, its own brain object and heart object. And when we create the Jill object, it has its own brain object and heart object. In this first example of how uh, Java objects communicate with one another, uh, we have uh, the work of the uh, danger sensing being done by the human class. And there is no issue in terms of calling methods on the heart object inside the human because the human owns the heart object. And this variable right here, my heart, provides what is known as a handle uh, to the heart object. So if the human needs to call methods on the heart object, it simply uses this handle. For example, right here, you can see it's calling the increase heart rate method on the heart object. But what would happen if we were to restructure our code uh, so that instead of having the human uh, call the heart object to increase the heart rate when danger was sensed, what if instead we wanted the brain uh, to send such a message to the heart object. Uh, now we have a problem because whereas the human class has a direct handle to the heart object, uh, the brain, as the code is currently architected, uh, does not know anything about the heart class or this particular heart object that belongs to this human. So the next thing we're going to demonstrate is how we can restructure our code so that this brain that's sitting in this human object is able to call methods on this heart object. So to do that, let's go back now and look at the brain object, the brain class, I should say. And in here, what we're going to do is we're going to modify the brain constructor uh, so that it also takes a heart object. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, save that inside the constructor. Uh, let me change one of these. Uh, I'll just call that heart here. And what we're going to do inside the constructor now when we're past the heart object or the handle to the heart, I should say, is we're simply going to save it in our permanent copy. And now that puts us in a position where later on, if this brain ever needs to call methods on this heart, it now has the address saved uh, in order to be able to do so. Uh, so to, with that in mind, let me now turn on this method. And uh, in order to uh, increase the heart rate, we can now uh, come over here simply and say uh, heart dot increase heart rate and whatever it is that we want like that. So now what we have to do is we have to go back and modify the code in our human uh, class so that it no longer uh, does this function. So let me just save this and uh, open up the human class now. And we're not going to need to do this anymore. And instead, what we're going to do is uh, we are going to call the uh, brains sense danger method now instead. And uh, now uh, we're going to, uh, I'm going to temporarily turn this off also because we want the brain to be able to tell us to sweat. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But right now what we've done so far is we've created a handle to the heart uh, in the brain. When we create the brain, it knows where the heart is. Okay, so let's, uh, let's run this code now and see it working. Uh, it should be my brain, sorry. 
Oh, and now, of course, when we create the brain, uh, this was the main thing, uh, we need to pass it the my heart handle. That's the handle to the heart that the brain constructor now needs. All right, now we're finally ready to run. And you can see that both constructors are still running. Uh, I haven't printed out any more information regarding the sense danger, which is why nothing else is printing. Uh, we'll do that in the more advanced version of the run. Okay, so now we know, uh, and you can see the arrow structure. Now, not only does the human contain the brain and the human contain the heart, but the brain also now uh, contains the heart object. In fact, it's going to contain the same heart object. Now what we're going to do is we're going to show how uh, objects that are contained in another object, in this case, uh, the, uh, the brain is contained inside the human. How can the brain now tell the human object or its owner, in other words, to start sweating? And uh, to do that, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to once again modify the brain uh, constructor. And this time it's gonna not only take a heart handle, it's also going to take a human handle like that and we're going to just save that in a property as well and I'll call that the owner of the current brain and here we'll save this in the owner field okay and now comes the tricky question of um, when we have the human, how do we tell the brain uh, about ourselves? Uh, notice that in the tester class, let's get the tester class for a second, we of course have these handles, uh, Jack and Jill, but here inside the human class, uh, those variables are meaningless because that's inside a, a different class. So what we need to do is we need to find some way of telling the brain about ourselves, this human object. And the way we uh, refer to myself or my current object in Java is by using the keyword this. And what that's saying basically is take this human's address, in other words, the address of the object we're currently in, and pass it in the constructor to the brain. And the brain knows that it is going to be a human uh, pointer and it's going to save that pointer or that address as its own owner and it knows that it's uh, the owner is a human and now what that does is it allows us uh, to later on when we need to tell the owner to do something uh, we can take the owner and now we have a handle to the owner and we can tell it to sweat like this okay and let's just run this code now and you can see now that uh, Jack is now sweating. And so what's happened here is that the uh, human initially sensed the danger, it told the brain. The brain uh, sent a message to the heart to increase its beating, but the brain then also sent a message back to the human uh, telling it to sweat. So that basically is how objects inside of a Java program can communicate with one another. Music